morning guys. I thought I'd come into the woods today because I'm suffering from cabin fever. We're not allowed to camp in Scotland yet, but you know we can get out and we can spend a good few hours exercising, that's allowed. And I just had to get out and show you this beautiful forest. We've been here once before but not in the summer and it's almost Jurassic in style. It's absolutely perfect with mosses and ferns and and uh, old and well mature trees. So I'd like to take a few shots of that beauty and uh, share it with you. So stand by. Well, I think we'll find a great place, uh, uh, totally invisible, out of sight of Joe Public. Now the midges are fierce, so I think it's time for that wretched bug net. But let's make lunch at least and then celebrate the forest. While I'm waiting to uh, have my brew up, some of you might have wondered in the past what I carry in my fire kit. I like to keep all my fire kit in a small bundle. It's an old um, uh, leather zip flexible uh, shoe polish case which I've adapted. And it fits perfectly at the top of the, uh, the side pocket above the BCB. And inside I can pack quite a lot, as you'll see. Uh, I've got here my Perseum rod. I also have to carry two, but one in the kit and one on the jacket. And in my sample bottles, enough fuel to burn for about eight or nine minutes. And so if I'm going on a day trip or one or a night, I might just take four of those. And they all fit nicely, nose to tail, into there. Um, a Swiss Army knife for obvious reasons, preparation, and an old pair of very sharp scissors which also live there permanently, and a piece of foil which always comes in handy as a, a wind shelter or a cover over the food. Kerosene rod on the top, and of course combat matches. And that's everything cleared up, squared away into uh, a very small space which has a kind of half circle shape about it and fits perfectly on top of the canteen pocket on the side of the Bergen. So that's my kit. When I get it back to base I always open it up and uh, take out the empty cartridges and replenish them. I guess uh, I leave it open for about uh, 24 hours just to make sure that if there's any damp on the go, it's, it gets a chance to dry off, ready for the next op. And a shout out uh, to Viking Mitch, who very kindly put me in touch with a guy who makes beautiful uh, BCB lids to fit. They're hard to get on the market, and this was only about 10 quid or 12 quid, it was very, very reasonable. And it can be used for cutting food on, 
and for covering and keeping things fresh uh, between courses. Brilliant piece of kit. It's tough, robust and completely practical. Well done. And it, I'm just wearing waterproofs today because it's very damp. It's been raining during the night and all most of yesterday. And um, one of the advantages is if you tighten up your ankles, your waistline, you don't even need bug sprays uh, and keep your cuffs tight if you want. It means you can roll around like a hobo in the forest and you're virtually bug free. Just check for ticks if you see any, flick them off and everything is nice and secure. So you feel free to, like an animal, be natural and just roll about in the forest and enjoy being here. The handle is hot but it's so small if you pick it up quickly you don't really feel the heat being transferred. What a view for a lunch break. Beats being in the office, doesn't it? I should mention my uh, little frying pan. I got this in Tesco a couple of year ago, and it's even though the handle's burned, I'll just replace it with a paracord or something at a later point. But it's lightweight, it's small. It takes about two eggs comfortably, or a nice sort of medium sized stir fry meal with vegetables. It's very lightweight, and, it, and because it's quite a thick steel base, uh, yet thin but dense, it heats up quickly and it's non-stick. So I don't carry oil with me on my outings. I always just take a bit of um, sausage that will have oil of its own and then add the vegetables later. So that's a great, and it squares nicely on top of the BCB platform as you can see. Many times you'll have seen me put sticks on my uh, BCB platform because it extends the burn time and it gives a bit of height. So there's no hurry, you can burn it as long as you need to. You can get by just with a BCP platform which doubles up as a little twig stove as well. So that's more than you need and the smoke is getting rid of the midges. Hallelujah. There's hope. This is a really, really, as I said earlier, nice forest. So getting out is a learning experience because today I've discovered a few things. One is um, I really need to wear knee pads if I'm going to be crawling around on my hands and knees on uh, broken debris and twigs on the forest bed. Uh, although knee pads are a pain in the neck because they get sweaty on the bands behind the legs but if you have to wear them to protect your equipment then you wear them. What else have I learned today? Oh yes, uh, using damp twigs after three or four days of rain. Uh, it's not a good idea because of the smoke, obviously. The smoke uh, gives your position away, so that's to be avoided. Um, but, you know, if you're in a fairly remote place, 
and your, tr your tinder is very, very dry, then you're on onto a winner. The other thing is that if you leave your tinder to burn right down, because the, uh, the rope beneath is fireproof, then all you're left is a white powder, as it all converts from charcoal to white powder. So it's easy to just blow it off, pack up your kit and go. So there's another advantage. Right, time to eat. So till next time, uh, look forward to getting into the wild a bit more cut take two. So until next time, take care and get out if you can. Chin chin.